What reports? What are your sentiments on the housing levy as well? We've just heard from the president that there will be some cash that will be, of course, given out to help some of the people that will be affected with these particular moves so that uh, they may create space for the affordable housing. So a sort of a stipend will be given uh, to help them for two, three months or the period that they will be out of their houses. And uh, they give also some handy opportunity for the installment of uh, those uh, houses or for the construction of those houses. I want us just to just pick up on that particular bit because uh, we need to get clarity. And I know Dr. Makale Mulu, uh, you might be having something to say uh, regarding that, what the president just said there. How, how has that been captured? Because the issue of having a stipend, <laughs> if I'm the one who's affected or rent being paid for me before I occupy my house, mm. that can really come to bear. Uh, it, 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 is it something that was really captured in the housing levy? Or oh, this is another broadside declaration? <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dubal. Uh, maybe before I comment on the, the issue of uh, the, the, the proposed, is it rent to be paid for those who are going to be displaced? Yes. Uh, I just want to say that uh, the issue of uh, the Kenyatta University students and the issue of the the, the, the doctors. You know today is the 12th day of mm. the doctor strike. Mm. And uh, when you look at what is happening in the country, uh, I don't see any, any hope of resolving this matter in near future. Because people seem to have taken very uh, firm position in terms of saying you are on the wrong and you have seen Governor Mudomi, what, what he was saying. And I think as a country, uh, we really need to seriously think about those who are dying because of what is happening. We might be taking this matter casually mm -hmm. for now, but I think uh, the consequences could be very bad for this country, and more so Kenyans who are not able to afford some private medical service. Uh, coming to the issue of uh, the, the Kenyatta students, uh, what we've seen is really very bad, mm -hmm. and I think uh, the problem we have in this country is that uh, we are very reactive. When things happen, you see ministers rushing there, you see people rushing there, talking nice about what is happening, giving all these condolences. But we seem to be not learning any lessons from what happens. And I, I, how I wish that this becomes like the, the, the wake up call, so that as we move to the future, we minimize some of these things. But now, coming to what the president has said. Right, indeed. Of course, there's uh, a very interesting editorial cartoon, even as you're talking about KU. You know, yes. now that you're celebrating Easter, yes. it's Palm Sunday yesterday, as you can see it there. Yes, Giza. Jesus is on a donkey, yes. and uh, we have all him using also the, our roads, and we have the police officer says, be careful. Yes, you see. Jesus. He can be crushed very easily. <laughs> you might <laughs> die from a road accident than a than crucifixion. Yes. <laughs> exactly. I think it's quite unfair. I think the message is crucifixion. Yeah. 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 Crucifixion is uh, this is what he meant there. Yeah. I, I think that message is hope. This is aptly, especially uh, as we're going towards Easter as well. Is, so yeah. Jesus, <laughs> in Kenya, you might die, but out of road accident. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. Instead of a you know that you're headed to be crucified. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> let's just learn. Up. I think let's learn the lessons and see how we can improve the situation. Because it, it, it's very disappointing, it's frustrating, especially if you are a parent and you, you have a, your son or girl, or a daughter in the university and all of a sudden yeah, they've lost their life. It, it hits you the hardest, I can tell you for sure. I imagine what the parents are going through. But anyway, let's come to the issue of the paying rent for people who are going to be temporarily displaced to, uh, to accommodate the construction of the uh, affordable houses. Mm -hmm. Uh, the idea is good, but I'm just hoping that it's not a political statement. Because when I'm looking at the implementation uh, uh, phase of it, it might prove to be a bit difficult. I don't know whether anybody has sat down and thought about how much it will cost to pay rent. And you know, people, people who live along Jogo Road, those houses are not cheap. It's not like those who live in Malale or, or Kibera. The Jeko Road houses are a bit expensive. I think they pay not less than about six, seven K per month. And some might even be over 10. So imagine you give somebody 10 K, one person, for two years. That's already 240 K, an individual. And those areas 
and densely populated. One house might be living, I'm telling you, because at one point I lived in that area. I used to have a brother. Actually, when I was in the university, I was living there. You'd find one small uh, 10 by 10 or let's say 12 by 12 having two families. So I'm, if you're talking about just a simple example about a thousand people and you're giving them 240K per year, just do that simple mathematics. So, 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 yeah. so I'm imagining that it might be a, a political statement and I, 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 I'm praying to God that I live for the next two years to, to see it. To see the reality of it. it, 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 it yeah. the reality. So let, let's look, because you, as you mentioned 10K, yes. uh, we're looking at Bahati, Bahati Shaul, Kanoleo, Moyo, all those areas. But, but you see, yeah. uh, I think because also those are government houses, uh, the, the, the list maybe they could be paying is 5,000 or below. Let's say 3,000. Yes. But now if you take them out from those houses, do you think we can actually get any house that really goes for 3,000? First of all, you wouldn't get any You won't houses. get any houses there. Though. That means uh, that, that 3,000 shillings you're talking about, maybe 15,000 shillings. Yes, because you have to push them. Yes. Unless uh, you push them the to the slums. Ma ma market rate, yes. because these are not subsidized by the government. Yes, by the government. So let's say if 15,000, 20,000, uh, and we have uh, a population of, let's say, uh, almost 200,000? Yeah, this is very many. Yeah. Those guys are many, I'm telling you. Yeah, know. in 200,000 almost there, yes. in that particular lo locality. If you mm -hmm. take all those estates yeah, the around, there, estates around there, uh, are we, we're talking about Jericho as well. Yes. Uh, we're talking about um, Uhuru Estate, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So if you do the math, and uh, we look at the pace also of this particular construction, mm -hmm. it won't happen within two years. Unless now that will be a breakneck uh, speed that uh, these constructions will be happening. Let's say, for instance, let's, mm -hmm. let's give it three years. If Dr. Nikali could do the math, do you think that is practical? And that's what we are saying. That's the that's issue, actually. And, and, and ah, another thing really which is... Out of and and it well and thought out. And the other question, basically, comes in. The other question is, eh, these people have been paying rent to the government. And now you want to pay them to do houses, which will actually give back to them. So... Should it be a government responsibility to pay in the, that, that interim period? Because they have been paying rent. So it's like you are telling now, you are moving from you have been paying rent, now I'll pay for you for two years till I bring you back to. And these are the, the issues of people. And that's dynamics around it. It could be uh, just a political statement. So they could as well be starting with the loans before the occupancy of the, yeah, house. the house. So since now you're telling me that I should move uh, what I've been paying as rent, I'll come and have, you know, sort of. Uh, a cover-up for you for that particular period. Why can't I start on my loan? So that now when I move to the house that you intend for me to be actually mm. occupying, uh, we continue with the same arrangement of you of me paying the, bal, the particular you know, rent. The bal, when I mean, you, or when paying you, for the house. For when the you come with programs, uh, you start with the policy, then you have a law, then you will actually have the implementation plan. Now, if you don't tie these things together, even a very noble uh, intention will fail. You know, if you look at the, 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 the housing law, the framework that we put in place very hurriedly, what is coming now is, uh, is under ownership. Mm. And remember uh, how you, you, you qualification for ownership. The period where you live is important, but what happens eventually? Now, the people who are living there now uh, the impression I'm getting from the president's statement is that they'll move, the houses will be built, they'll come back. They'll come back, Now, yeah. how has the law we put in place take care of that? Do they, do they all qualify? If you, before you make a broad statement that you'll all come back, do they all qualify? Has that been taken care of the law? That worries me a lot. We have seen in the past, this is not the first time there's been an effort to do houses, to move people from the slums. You remember even in an uh, uh, area like Pumwani, there was an estate called California Biafra, which was supposed to actually move people there. So the, the houses were built, people were moved, and it's not the people who are staying there that went to those houses. Now, if you put it in the market, in case you put it in the market forces, other people will come to, to, to stay there. So my worry is if they are told, I know people are living in, 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 in Kaloleni, those, those areas. Um, if you tell them to move, 
First of all, where are they going? Now, if you are going to give them money, even before you talk of how much it is, in our budget now, where is that money placed? Is this money going to come from the housing levy? Is it part of it? And the way we have structured the housing levy and the people mm -hmm. are going to do it, if, uh, have we put aside that money uh, as, a, as a portion of the housing levy? Probably if you then start eating into the housing levy before you start the building to house the people that were there, then you are having the program of where the, the government is paying people, paying rent for people. Our, our friend, we have lawyers here. Is that catered for in the framework that we have now? So there, there are many, many, many issues. And after you have built, the next one is after you have built them, are they the same people that will come back? So that you tie the money you are giving them now to their ownership later, even if you are thinking the way you are saying it. So that I see as, 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 as a problem. The, the other thing is, there are people, a lot of people living there. Do you want to move? Because from what you hear, you talk all the way down, Jericho, Jerusalem, uh, Bahati, Kaloleni, all those areas. It's a huge, a huge uh, you want to move those people who are staying in those. Majengo. At once, my, across the, mm -hmm. Majengo. You want to move them at once. So we, what we should be hearing is probably not a lot of talking in the press, but actually a technical people say, we are going to move people in stages. Mm -hmm. This batch of people, will move them, the houses are built, then they go back. The, the next batch, you go like that. And you also plan where you are going. You don't take a person and tell them, I'm giving you 3,000 and now move. Go so I don't yourself. care where you are going. Mm -hmm. You must also take into consideration when we move people from this area, where are we going to move them? What is the cost? Are we going to put temporary structures? Are they going to just sort themselves out? So I have a feeling that we have gone through the legal framework. Now we are on a challenging issue. What is the implementation framework which is supported by the legal arrangement? And the financial arrangement. So we, 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 we are, we are, this is where people sit down, not to talk on TV. This is where people sit down on the table. Leave it, to, tec leave it to the technical people at this point, unless planning. Then you can get it done. Otherwise, it will be a fiasco, and people will suffer. All right. It appears this was not really well um, thought through, and it's, it's an emerging issue. The president was really caught up now there. He has now the people. What does he tell them? Mm -hmm. So uh, he, was he speaking out of turn, or, or is this part of the, pi of the pipeline as well? Thanks, Dibal. I, I like the way uh, Dr. Nkala has brought this out, that we have had this conversation about affordable housing before. We have had plans about affordable housing before. We have had ideas about affordable housing before. And now we have begun a process of implementing that idea. It's coming in at this time where at least we have gone out of the policy framework that this government and other previous governments had thought through before. How? By at least implementing or rather enacting the law that is in place, the affordable housing, which of course came in at the time when everyone else was struggling to clamor about why pay, how people going to court, court making a pronouncement about it, going back to, uh, you know, accommodate the directives of the court. And here we are now, there is a law in place. That same, same law, uh, Debal, uh, mandates the cabinet secretary to prepare regulations on how that will be implemented. Mm -hmm. Among the things which I'm very sure will be in the regulations is answering the question that you have asked and that uh, Dr. Nikal has asked. In terms of how do we implement this policy, and that is exactly what the president was making reference to in his uh, you know, response to the public about what will happen to the question that the Hondombo, um, the MP for uh, the place I lived, uh, remind me. Uh, Aladwa. 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 Yes, Aladwa. 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 saying that, look, these people have been given notice uh, to vacate uh, mm. the houses they are living in by uh, April 30th. Mm. And uh, 
it is out of that question that the president was responding that, look, we definitely cannot evict someone uh, without a plan. Why? Because though the idea that we are having in place is to give them affordable housing from where they are to a better living uh, condition, which also comes along with ownership, we will find a way of settling them elsewhere for the period that the construction will be going on. And when Dr. Nikal says we ought to have phased this out in, uh, you know, batches, so that we say we are asking the first 50 plus families to move, a construction will take a certain timeline. They come back, and then another group happens. That will definitely be the answer that comes in with the regulations that are going to be in place. And I'm sure the technical aspect of implementation of the affordable housing uh, uh, law, which has now been passed by parliament, and which the courts have refused to stay its implementation, is going to be within the, uh, the, the regulations, which by the end of the month will be in place. And number two, the idea behind now answering that question is to cushion the residents of the places which will be affected and also give them hope in the sense that they are also looking forward to and that is if you listen to the honorable uh, aladua to say that look i as the area mp even together with the people he is representing are not in any way opposed to the housing project and what he's asking is let's not evict these people so the solution to such a concern is not going to be found in just the statement that the president made there is a host of other members, a team, technical for that matter, who definitely works behind. Because the other day, um, last week, but that was last Saturday, actually, last Saturday, but what? We hosted the president, we hosted the president in Bamet, where he was launching similar uh, projects, affordable housing, 262 for that matter, to be very specific. And uh, prior to that, a good number of people were not even aware that such a construction was going on. We went on site. Uh, 160 houses are already in their first floor. 107 Kenyans have had full-time employment in that site. So many contractors have been subcontracted to do the job. And the answer to all this is lying on the people who are behind the scenes. I mean, the man who took us through the process from when it started to where it is as it now, the peers uh, who is involved definitely would comfortably answer to a number of these questions which have already been put in place Thank you. plans to operationalize the same. So, as, as I said, it is good that uh, Honorable Nikal is asking very, uh, you know, uh, important questions as to how, and of course those questions have got answers in the technical Thank detail. you. Right, we'll come back to you, but I also I will, I will need to get clarity from you when you say that the, the court has refused to implement this stay. Uh, the yeah. court, uh, you know, immediately after the... Yeah, yeah, well, you'll come back, as I sort out your mic, I think it's crackling. Okay. I can hear it crackling, so we can sort it out. Then we, once we, we get, get very limpid with that as well, what was the development from the courts regarding uh, the housing levy? Because there are nine petitioners who have challenged uh, that, the, the levy in the courts. One of key element of it is also the devolution aspect that house, housing has been devolved. Okay. So we want to also just hear what will, is the way forward because I think that matter is still alive in court and how will it go here to affect the housing levy. Let me just come to Horobo Ruko as well to just get his introductory remarks uh, and to tell us uh, what has been the highlight of his week as well. Good morning, good to see you. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, I think uh, Kenya has become very litigant. You know, everything... Uh, which is proposed by government and by parliament, uh, someone somewhere will run to the, to the court uh, to put an injunction. Uh, but that is a constitutional right. It is uh, within the space or the spectrum of our constitution. We have a very uh, ripper constitution, uh, almost uh, at the same uh, level with the United States uh, constitution. Mm. Having said that, I think it's uh, important also I put this into perspective as uh, this discussion of uh, 
what's happening in, in the country in different uh, front, mm -hmm. whether it is housing, whether it is in health. Indeed. And uh, the founding fathers of this nation, they, they, they identified, I think, three challenges which they thought once we fight, once we work on these challenges, our nation will be okay. That was uh, education, uh, you know, literacy, uh, disease, and anger. So, uh, but the founding fathers did not achieve that. And history will have a very present uh, place for our president, William Roger. Because I think within the remaining nine years, uh, President Ruto will be in office. He will definitely achieve some of these uh, goals. So we are in a time in history. In the remaining nine years. Yeah, in the remaining nine years. It's a given. In the remaining nine years. Yeah. I'll comment on that. How that is in the remaining nine years. That's 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 what uh, from where from where I sit. Okay. Uh, William Ruto will be the next president for another nine years. Um, the, the housing plan is going to transform this country. I was saying give it to the president for his vision in terms of housing, in terms of health uh, sector to ensure we have a healthy population. You know, mm -hmm. the population of the Republic of Kenya is healthy. The a legal framework which has been put in place together with the regulations which uh, are almost getting uh, uh, publication, getting uh, gazetted. Uh, I've come up with a revolutionary uh, ways of addressing health issues in the Republic of Kenya. We saw that uh, when the president came into office, the first thing he did is start education task force to look at uh, the curriculum about the sector of the education sector and also remember the financing of the higher 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 running or the rather higher education whether it is tivet or um, universities that also has taken a different shape mm -hmm. so there is quite a road that is happening to lay a fertile ground for transformation of this country we are now talking about the housing plan. I mean, the affordable housing uh, uh, program, which we have gone through um, through the laws in Parliament. I remember uh, Dr. Jinka was had so many uh, amendments, so many amendments. Some of them were uh, very, very critical amendments. Some of them we agreed with them, uh, as far as uh, affordable housing program is concerned, and that only the law, that's only enactment of the law. We must have proper regulations anchored on this uh, piece of law. And then after getting these uh, regulations, we must have now a proper program with the implementation matrix on how it's going to be, how it's going to spread across the, across the country. And that is where Professor Nika and my brother here, I have some questions. But give it to the president for, and his team for being able to conceive a program which other administrations have not been able to conceive, putting a law in place, getting it supported in parliament, regulations are coming, and now we are at implementation stage where we are asking difficult questions. And I can assure you, all these difficult questions will be answered because I don't think Kenya Kwanzaa government is ready to see wastage of 1.5% housing levy. It's a levy which is very painful to the, to the people of, of, of Kenya, those who are paying 1.5%. All of us, because including even those who are in, in the formal sector, are going to pay 1.5% of their income. Now, it's a very painful tax. We cannot, even us as members of parliament, we cannot sit and watch that 1.5% housing levy, which is painful, getting utilized in a, a manner that is not well planned. And if there is anybody out there who is planning to squander this levy, this money, which is painful from a pocket of Kenyans, then that person should be hung somewhere in a very tall tree in Ulpak, 
if we have such a tree in, uh, in Ulpak. So that we can teach a proper lesson that tax revenue we collect from Kenyans should be properly utilized. So implementation program is extremely key. It must be well thought. We have to put our energy Thank and you. thoughts but even in it. Before we go to the implementation program, if I may just butt in, because we had <clears throat> a good handy opportunity in the National Assembly. Yes to try and debate these issues that uh, are being raised in the courts. Yeah. Yeah? I think these are not new issues. Regarding the dev devolution was actually put on the floor of the House. You're not given a conducive environment to debate these particular issues. And we know uh, there was litigants waiting. Mm -hmm. With the same, same issues that you had had the opportunity to debate. The issues of who will be the entity that will be collecting this revenue, which is still up to now, it's not very clear. It's amorphous. Where the money is going, we do not know. It does not carry who is the entity, which is a body that has not been encapsulated by the, 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 the bill as, it's, as, it is, as it is right now. So the question is, why are we wasting Kenya's time on issues we knew this will be the spawning grounds of litigation and we're now in the course again because we're not home and dry as far as the courts are concerned. And even mm. as we put it that uh, this, the, the court has refused to stay, mm. uh, you know, uh, and vacate this particular... Is it this, the, the state of a vacation? Or what were you saying? I was right? saying, uh, uh, <coughs> Debal, that uh, on the 16th of, uh, of May, a group of, of Kenyans went to court to challenge the uh, passage of uh, the bill, appeared before Justice Mwita, and on this uh, particular petition, they were seeking to stay the immediate implementation of the act. So the court, did the court refuse? The court declined to grant <coughs> any interim relief, acknowledged the fact that they have raised very fundamental issues that needs to be discussed and needs to be heard, uh -huh. and therefore directed that they have uh, seven days to file their responses right. and have the rest of So the they parties. still have their prey? They still definitely have. So we know that thing is, uh, is still uh, alive. Yeah, okay. That is what I wanted you to clarify. Yes, we're going back to court on the 16th of May, 2024. 16th of May, 2024. 16th of May, 2024. On the issues that you, you, ha you and the Senate debated on, Dibau. isn't it? These are not new issues. You actually raised... Dibau, can I just put yes. this into context? Please. Uh, I've listened to my, to my colleagues and... Uh, the bow, the housing, uh, the housing program, is actually a program. And uh, from a very basic principle, any time you are doing a program, there is what we call the program circle, project or program circle, which in for means that by the time you you come up with a program, there are some basic things you do. You must think at the design level. You must think about design and appraisal. You must think about the implementation matrix, which brings in the issues of finance, human resource, <coughs> institutional setup. Then you must think about monitoring and evaluation. It's a circle. You don't isolate one bit you do, then move to the other bit. You don't do it that way. Yeah, emerging you issues from are coming. The, the beginning to the end, and then by the time you talk about a program, you'll have thought about how will it be implemented, uh, what will be the, 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 the legal framework, the institutional framework. Then you will come and talk about how we, shall we monitor to make sure that then we, it is implemented as planned and pick lessons learned to inform future designs. Now, you can't say we have only done one bit where we have looked about the law and then we are waiting for the regulations. It's a package. It's not a standalone. And that, that's why you see, when I listen to them, they are struggling to give us the, the, the answers we're asking. The thing is, what the president said when he was in, he was in the neighborhood here. Yeah, yeah. What, what he said in Islam. is, is this something informed by evidence? It somebody, it somebody sat down, thought about the cost, how much it will cost, thought about the institutional setup to, to implement that, that, that policy statement. And I think that's why your, your, your earlier statement of, was it a roadside declaration, uh, needs to be interrogated. Because if, if people had not sat down to think about it, then with the details we are asking for, then automatically it becomes, logically, it becomes a, a roadside declaration. And yeah. I, think, I think that's what Dibal was, uh, well, that's what Dr. Tari was saying. <laughs> Dibal, something has come out here which is very, very important, actually two. Uh, Honorable Ruku started by saying for the next ten, nine years. Now, what, the, what then brings into your <coughs> mind is that every time we are thinking of the next election. Now, if you don't uh, split the electoral process from implementation process, you always have a problem. 
Because I think sometimes when the president is speaking, he's speaking the context of the next election. The way you campaign, you, the rhetoric you use during campaign must be totally different from information you give during implementation. So that, uh, you see, like Honorable Sugei here said, we are going to have regulation. If it is true somebody is working regulations, all of us here know that you won't have those regulations between now and 1st of April past. And by that time, you have given people the notice. The notice. So you, you have mixed uh, the politics, you've mixed legislation, you've mixed it with implementation. Because if it is true, there's an, a technical person who is working. This time, what Kenyans want to hear, we have said we want to give houses. We have made the law. Now they want to see how they are going to get houses. That is better left to technical people. So that we would now be hearing the peers in housing saying the plan for housing are like this. In, in Nairobi, in Iceland, this is how we are going to do. This is how people are going to move. This, this month to this month, this year to this year, we are going to do that. So that you see a clear distinction from the, the rhetoric of the next election, from the legislation process, which should have taken place. You can't talk about regulations being in the making and we're already giving uh, deadlines on when people should move. But you are saying that same regulation is the one that is going to guide how the people will move. And deductions, so, and, and deductions are already ongoing yeah, as well. So, so, so what, the, may I'll give this as a free advice. When we have made very important, and they're very useful, if you tell any Kenyan we want a housing, they are, they are happy with it. But why is it sounding unpopular? People cannot see from what you are saying, from the money being collected, how they get the house. If you don't see that, and that normally is not a role of politicians to a large extent. Right. Leave that to the people. So uh, when, when you, 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 you must leave it now, let the peers tell us how people are going to move. If they are going to be paid, where is the money coming from? We would even ask how much is it and from what vote it is coming. Those are the things we, we will ask. So this rent is coming from the housing so, levy? Uh, the, if because we there's, a question, there's a question you asked and there's a very part of the question on uh, asking who will be collecting this uh, money. No. And uh, the act is clear that uh, the way the f there, there shall be establishment of management of, a found of, of uh, oh. affordable housing fund. So there's a fund which is constituted by the act of uh, house, the affordable housing act 2024 or 2023 and it's clear how that fund will be managed. So there's no fakeness as far as the, the law is concerned on who will be receiving this money or who will be collecting this money, how that money will be administered uh, and taken care of. So the law is there, it's clear. We only, we only need to go through it. If you go to section uh, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11, all these, we are all talking about how the funds will be administered. So money will be safe as far as um, is concerned. But what we are saying is, we have seen in the past where resources, Kenyan resources are mismanaged. If there is anybody out there whether the peers or the minister or whoever will be the CEO of this fund, utilizing this money in a manner that is not prudent enough for the vision to be achieved of getting affordable houses across the nation. I'm telling you, it will be very painful for that person. Yes, so let, it let, is let, clear. Let me, yes, it is, it is clear. It but is clear. Let, Number two, let, what uh, Professor uh, Nikar has just said, uh, in terms of... Um, that uh, we are not looking, uh, we are already looking in the future as far as politics is concerned. No, President William Ruto has been very categorical. That he's making very painful decisions, even to himself, for the sake of this nation. Decisions which can cost him the, general, the, the next general elections. He is on record saying that. So these decisions is making, is not making these decisions so that he can be able to win general election in 2027. He's saying, I'm going to make this decision without thinking whether there will be general election come 2027. Right. Because even if I don't become 
uh, uh, don't come back as a president in 2027, I would have made the right decision for the posterity of this nation. And because of that, that's why you are saying this is the right guy to support even come 2027 so that he can go at least for two terms. So, so, All right, let me but, ask but, you. Well, just let me, just, let me, just let me, a moment. Let, let me just follow through uh, with that particular. So this institution is yet to be formed, isn't it? No, no, it's, it's formed by law. It's in place. It's by in place. Law. Which, it's which in place. One, which, what, so which one is this? What is, 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 what is the name of that institution? Just, what is remaining at no. the moment? No, no, what is the name of the, that institution? It is called, it is called uh, board, housing, board, it is called affordable housing fund. A support, affordable a housing fund. fund? That's a fund. That's a fund. But That's a fund. No, it's I'm, not I'm, established. You, you it is not established. Yeah, that, you you that, no, 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 just, no, it is no, established. Let me go by the, the legal framework for it is there, is but there? it's not operational. That we yeah. don't have. It, so it, we need yeah. how to put people That's, in place. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. My point. It's not operational. Yes. So we have already people who have deducted money. Mm -hmm. From their, they have been deducted money from their salaries. So where is it domiciled? From, from end of this month. No, but as, as far now? as this, this law is concerned, it continues. In the, in the, in no, the, in the previously, <laughs> we've had money deducted. I mean, people have been asking, where is this money that has been deducted? If we don't have this institution in place, where is it domiciled right now? If you had to ask for that money, all this money, at least records of 1.5 percent of everybody who was salaried then, and now we we'll include those who are not salaried but in formal sector. That records are there. All that money. Will be domes uh, will be uh, I'm in asking, the account. No, no, I'm asking. Of, uh, no, no, I'm asking right now. Where, where is it domiciled right now? Because it's been deducted already. Consolidated uh, account of the Republic of Kenya. Is it supposed to go to the consolidated accounts of the Republic of Kenya? Yeah, it's a collection like another. So once KRI collects the money, it ends there. But the, the question is, you know, so we want to get all that you calculate the percent, uh, the, the, the amount, then all that it will be transferred to the account uh, of the. Affordable housing fund. But let me say, let me repeat it. We we must move policy. We are in we we are good policy. We go to parliament, make the law. Doctor Nikal. Now, now, no, 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 no. Let me just say. Let me just say this. Okay. Let me just say this. We must move our people from aspirations, <laughs> plan, laws, and then plans. Now people are more happy at plans. What people are waiting <laughs> for now is how I will apply, how I will get the house. If I move, where I'm going to stay, who is going to pay for that? Let me make it simpler. Uh, managing a uh, country may be complex, but it's just simple. If a church decided that we are going to go to a trip, it will be said we are going to go to a trip in the mountain or, in, or the lake. Let me use those words. They normally, go to, the, they normally go to the mountain. Or Mombasa, so it's you go to a trip. The church has made that decision. Mm -hmm. They say we will pay so much. And uh, we have agreed, yes. Then they say the money will be collected by so and so. We want to mark that money by this date. That time you don't need the vicar always. You have somebody who is now saying, that money we are collecting, we have it this date. Then when we are going, this is how people will move. There will be so many buses. There will be bus A, bus B, bus C. The people who will be in bus A will be the following people. That's now not the vicar talking. Depart. Now, here, what we now, we moved as they said, now we want to see these people. If there is a fund, we want to know who is the CEO of that fund. Depart. Now, uh, if, the, if the CEO of that fund is there. Yeah, 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 let him finish. Yeah, let, let, no, so, let him finish. No, no. Then we, who, we is the, who, is, who is the CEO oh. of that fund? Now, we have actually said this fund will go to three entities. How will that, this fund then move to those the free entities? Now, if now we are going to put housing, we know we hear one is there, one, you go to Bomet, you find already the houses in Bomet, people didn't know the which part for. We say the program is this, and this is the, we are going, this time we are doing houses from this place, this place. The people, if people are living there, these people are asked to move, and the arrangement is this. We know they can get houses there. We are paying them this money. When we finish, then these same people will move. Where Honorable Aladwa is, the Honorable Aladwa should now not be talking with the president in a church about that. Honorable Aladwa should be talking with technical people who are telling him how his people will be moved, where they'll be going. If they are going to be given some money to cover them for rent, how that money will be paid. Then people become comfortable. 
because you get to a point where they are now touch, they can touch the thing. Let me just give you an example. When we wanted to introduce, change the drugs from queen, uh, chloroquine to Coatem, and we wanted President Kibaki to launch it, he kept asking, have the drugs come? So they are coming, so then we don't, we don't launch it. When they have come, have you distributed them to the health centers? Say, no, they are still in the stores, then we don't launch. Now, are they in the stores? Say, yes. Now we can launch. Because if a president says there will be new drugs today, tomorrow people should go to the dispensary to find the drugs. If a president said we are going to have new houses starting this, tomorrow they should know there will be a house. If you said I'll be moved and I'll get money for moving, the following day when a guy appears at his door, the guy will tell him where he's going. A president during implementation talks when the plans are finished and the thing is being implemented tomorrow. During campaign, a president talks of what will be done. That distinction is Thank missing. You. Thank you. Uh, El, uh, okay. Jebal, thank you. I've been a bit patient uh, because uh, I don't normally like uh, interjecting what my colleagues are speaking. It is decorum. Now, we are asking ourselves questions which are not geared towards supporting Kenyans, supporting the agenda of affordable housing. And uh, for starters, for lay persons, for everyone else, public in Kenya, you cannot work on something unless there is a law in place. And Dr. Nikal knows that very well. But the law has been done. This law came into force on 19th of March 2024. 19th of March 2024. How many days ago? Today is 25th. It is barely six days old. That is when the president ascended to the law. And this law culminated from a process, remember, a very rigorous process because in, in, in December last year, actually November, not December, November last year, Kenyans who had gone to court got a court finding where the court said the act that was put in place then was in breach of Article 10, Article 201, Article 206 and Article 210 of the Constitution. Generally, those findings said that there was no comprehensive legal framework that had been put in place to implement the affordable housing program. It also said that it was a bit discriminatory because people who are not employed, who are not salaried, were not factored in that particular law. And thirdly, they had made reference to an element on public participation, where the court had said there wasn't full and comprehensive public participation to engage and involve all the Kenyans. Those are the basics. What did we do as Kenya Kwanzaa? Embark on making sure that what the court had said in a constitutional petition needs to be enforced. And so there was a retreat in terms of get involved with the public in public participation of all these issues. Make sure that you have a comprehensive legal framework that covers whatever issues the petitioners had raised, including the element of how does one who is not employed get involved in this thing. And so that process ultimately came to 19th of March when the law was ascended to. And uh, for your information, uh, Debal, when this bill was debated in the Senate, 63 amendments were proposed. 63. That tells you views from among many Kenyans, whether lay persons, practitioners, or those who were involved in the interest of making sure that we give Kenyans affordable housing, were considered. Now, this is barely six days old. For us to now seriously deal with the issue of we have not made sure that this and this is in place is being limited even to the objective of the act in itself there is a board in place number one actually see i'm trying to recall the name i do not I, I can't recall the name of that ceo number two this process has begun and last week when the president uh, so there's a board was launching um, if for me i don't know and if, a ceo I, not a board a ceo in, in office I, I'll, I'll just there's a CEO in office check it. Yes, there is a CEO in office. I'm forgetting the name of, of the CEO who's been put in office. And we went through and the, the recruitment two, process as well, uh, competitively. Of course, as we run the process. 
Remember, Dibal, when we become very objective and, and when we don't politicize such a very important aspect in reforming the housing situation in Kenya, remember Kibra is, is the largest in Africa. When you overfly Kibra, you will appreciate the fact that we need to make Kenyans get affordable housing where they are able to get decent housing, they are able to get basic facilities, they are able to also live and enjoy being Kenyans, especially in the city. If we were to have that as a main view, for example, these small concerns that we are now going to discuss, and it only derails the process. And in your screen, by but the way... But there are small concerns that actually uh, in the, in this, is a spoiling in, in ground screen, for litigation, in, 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 as in, I've raised it screen. before. You don't tighten the, those nooses. And, and that is why I told you... And then and that is why we I have told the derailment that comes from the courts. That is why I told you, immediately this law was passed in Parliament before the President ascended to it, on 16th of... On, 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 uh, 19th. On, on 19th, before the President ascended. Guys had rushed to court, thinking that the court will still agree with them and also stop the president from ascending to it. And luckily enough, the court felt and appreciated the fact that, look, I don't live in mass in the night and come back in the morning to Kenya. They know that Kenyans need affordable housing. The way Dr. Nikali is saying we need, the way everyone else is saying we need to transform the way we appreciate our Kenyans when they also need to have affordable housing. And that is why the court said, look, Though you have raised issues, these issues does not warrant a stoppage of the process from being implemented. So let's allow at least the government to run programs. Let's allow the government to put in place regulations that will ensure that this law, which we all debated and passed in parliament, serves the intention of parliament. And in this case, serves to give Kenyans affordable housing. When you saw that police officer the other day when the president actually gave her the key, she was a police officer with two of her sons. I mean, no, there were three of them, actually. And if you listen to what she was saying, you would appreciate why the bigger question should be, how do we support mm -hmm. the implementation of this agenda? When you listen to that police officer saying, I now own a house that I call my house, that my kids will go knowing we will go home, that the amount of money I'm paying at the end of the month goes towards ownership of this house and not just enriching a Thank landlord. You. It is something that we should now focus. Right. As an yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think, I think it's, 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 it's Ruku. Yeah, it, uh, I, was, I was, was patiently uh, waiting. Uh, to to Nika. Uh, yeah. I thought he came in after <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, I, he had jumped to your bit. I, I think you had jumped him. Uh, and right. a place you and to allow me yeah. to just yeah. allow to me to say something. After allow you. me to just say something yes. I, I, which I forgot. Dr. Nikal has something that Kenyans are asking. Remember, we all sensitize Kenyans every day. How to get into this housing? Who will get it? Mm. There is a portal called Bomayetu. If you go into that Bomayetu right now. It will give you a breakdown of what you need to do, what application you are supposed to make, how to do it, and the categories of the affordable housing that are there. It's only that you're becoming lazy and not uh, you know, doing that which you're supposed to do. Okay. So we always will sensitize Kenyans to get in there, apply so, under the so ministry, and so, pay housing. So, Just about, no, no, no. Uh, it's Roku. <laughs> I think Roku is the last one. Then we go back to you. You are the first. It's, it's okay. So we okay. go in that sequence. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. uh, we have to appreciate that... Uh, we are socialized differently uh, depending on our background of training. Uh, Nika is a scientist, uh, is a lawyer, and we have also those uh, people who have done uh, management. I'm telling you, they will not see any crisis as far as uh, management or midwiving this process now of construction of affordable houses across the country. Why? Because in management uh, department, there is something called four Ps. And it stands for program, mm -hmm. plan, policy, and projects. And for you to be able to implement any project, first of all, you have to come up with a program. That program will, will uh, inform the kind of plans you are going to uh, put in place. And that's where uh, strategic planning emanates from. And then from a, a plan or from a strategic plan, then you are going to have uh, the policy, how the policy is supporting the plan. Then after getting the right, the policy is supporting the plan, you can now go to implementation of projects. At the moment, Professor Yunikar, we have come up with the affordable housing 
Act, which is in place for the last six days. Out of this, we must develop clear plans. These clear plans will be able to address some of the questions you're asking. Within six days, it's not possible to, um, to develop uh, clear plans within six days. Absolutely. Okay? So, within a couple of one or two months, we'll have done the regulations, we'll have done the plans, then proper policies, informed by all the information, wealth of information we have from the time uh, we started uh, trying this uh, program during uh, Uru's uh, Kenyatta presidency to the time we came in without a proper uh, law in place to now that we have proper law in place. So we put all this information together, all this knowledge together, all the try and error we have managed to go through into a policy. And then after that, the rolling of these affordable houses across the nation will be something which will be beautiful. And I'm telling you, before the end of this year, Dr. Ali, you'll be saying, you'll be saying <laughs> William Ruto is a true genius in revitalizing the housing sector of the Republic of Kenya, creating jobs and injecting the economy with serious uh, uh, funds. Because it's a huge amount of money which is going to be injected in all sectors of the economy. Professionals will be abroad in this sector. Architects will be abroad. Engineers will be abroad. Human resource managers will be abroad. Supply and uh, supply chain managers will be abroad. Not only the, the foodies, which we are talking about in our meetings, the villages. No, 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 no. Professionals to the skilled laborers will really, you know, be integral in Thank this you. program. All right. Honorable Bokali, my music is up. Allow me just to circle back with you as well and consider this question that is coming from uh, a viewer here, actually. Uh, used to be my lecturer. He says, uh, please ask the panel. Most of the land where the housing projects are taking, projects are taking place is government-owned and has not been degazated. De Just wanted to know what will happen to, to them if a successive government comes in. I will say for the future, uh, or will they be sitting on a powder keg? Uh, that is a question that's being asked there. So we can consider that question as we circle back as well. And go, you get reactions. Uh, we get reactions from you from what uh, Hilary Segea has been saying, and Dr. Nikel as well, and also Hombu Ruku. And when we circle back, we want to know uh, also.